Hey, welcome back! In this video, I'm going to discuss my experiences and methods for designing a dungeon. This is the introduction video for a new series on adventure design that I am doing. I will have a link to the full playlist in the description down below. When flipping through my old DM binder, I was reminded with how silly some of my maps were at the time. Many of them were randomly generated by what felt good at the moment or what would fit on the graph paper with no real thought on what would make a good dungeon, you know, that would actually make sense. I would scatter around monsters, secret doors, and traps in a rather haphazard fashion. Yes, like many people, I even had a few monsters stuck in rooms without access to either food or water, and no way for them to get out to get their own. Now, I blame my designs on being inspired by works like Steve Jackson's The Warlock of Firetop Mountain, you know, and the rest of the Fighting Fantasy series, which, honestly, were featured in many of my early games. So, since then, I've read many thoughts on dungeon design. Uh, the summary thought of all of these articles seems to be that the dungeon was created by some civilization or extremely powerful being at some point, and, you know, it would have been built for an original purpose, and even though it's abandoned or maybe taken over by something else, there should be some remnant, some hint to that original purpose, even if it was overrun several times in the past. You know, how many ever centuries ago? As a player, I can honestly say that I never gave much thought to the history of a dungeon that I was exploring. Sure, you know, if a statue or fountain or other feature was encountered, I might wonder for a moment about its past. But as a player, I was always involved in the here and now. As a DM, when I try to give relevant backstory, most of the people I have played with listen patiently, but, you know, they never even pretend to take notes at that point. But there was always one thing that came to mind for me, and that thing was the mystery of the place. I wasn't concerned so much about the history of the place, other than what was directly related to the plot, but more so about the here and now of the place. I wanted to know why things are the way they are at the current time and not some point in the past that doesn't have an impact on my character. So that is where I have typically been as a player. But when designing a dungeon, I have found that it does make it easier if I give at least some thought into the purpose of the place. After all, unless you're just going with a random encounters in a cave or forest clearing, the place the characters are exploring was built by somebody for some purpose. I like to ask myself why various features exist and how they make sense in relation to each other. Being organized certainly helps figure out why things are the way they are, you know. So, knowing the history of the place can also help you to organize the larger area around the, pl the place. Uh, for example, to top of my head here, Let's say a thousand years ago, a local group of people created a stone foundation on top of a hill. Uh, they used the fortification when various armies of orcs would march through the area. Um, hundreds of years later, it, it was abandoned by them. And a wizard, well, let's call him Cyprian, found and claimed the foundations for himself. He brought in groups of orc workers, because by then the orcs weren't these big massive armies anymore. So he brought in these orc workers to create both a dungeon complex and a tower. Of course, eventually, Cyprian died, and the orcs took over the place, and they continued to expand it for their own purposes. Um, hundreds of years after that event, or the present day for the PCs, the orcs themselves have been greatly diminished by various reasons that probably aren't relevant. But there's now only a mere shadow of their former force occupying the uh, tower and, and dungeons below. Its location in the middle of nowhere does help them maintain their hold. So, what information do you include when you are coming up with ideas from this point? Well, for me, knowing this information that we just talked about, I can start to really design an interesting dungeon. Since Cyprian was a wizard, he will need living quarters, perhaps research rooms, 
Uh, let's say he was known for amassing an impressive library, so he'll want to set aside rooms for this. And you're going to have some storage rooms, some guest rooms for visiting winter wizards. Uh, maybe he had some apprentices. Um, of course, when the orcs were originally working for him, they would need the places to stay as well. So let's say there's other buildings on the complex used by them. Now, whether or not they are still in use is up to us, but they're there. And let's not forget those people from a thousand years ago. Did they have some places or artifacts as well that the wizard became interested in? You know, all of that can kind of start to work in. Thinking about the dungeons below the tower, what did he use them for? I mean, why did he have, he have them made to begin with? So, perhaps he's a wizard, I mean, he, he is a wizard, so perhaps he has some more dangerous experiments down there. Uh, maybe he tapped into an underground cave complex and included a large river or lake, and that's how he got his water. It could be something as mundane as that. and But now we have an idea of how Saprian used to use this area, and now we get to decide how the orcs are currently using it. Or rather, how the orcs back then when they took over were using it. Now, the living spaces in the tower would have likely been taken over by orc leaders. Uh, we would have to answer the question of what became of the library. Has a community of orcs created a town around the underground lake, assuming we went with that idea? Did they burrow into the surrounding rocks, so kind of expanded out that area? Um, what happened to the dangerous experiments? Are some of them still active? Are there taboo areas that not even the orcs will enter? What became of the wizards, tools, magics, artifacts? All those are things that we can start to answer. And what additional features have the orcs added when they were much more powerful than they are now? Perhaps they added prisons, torture chambers, armories. You know, maybe they did some mining and actually discovered some gold, so there might be a new treasury. And then finally, we have to think about what is bringing the adventurers to the area. We okay, made a really cool place, but why is anybody going to go there? And it could be something as simple as rumors of treasure. Uh, you could go with the angle of uh, lost books or artifacts from those people a thousand years ago. Um, perhaps there's an, a hidden library that the adventurer's mentor has learned about, and he's sending the adventurers to retrieve some item. That's a, that, that's a popular quest. Or, you know, maybe an evil cleric, and I kind of like this one. An evil cleric has moved into the area and began raising the skeletons of both orcs and those people from, you know, a thousand years ago. And so he's kind of moved in. He's kind of pushed out the orcs a little bit. The orcs are still there. They kind of have this truce thing going on. But what changes has the cleric made to his area by the time the PCs get there? Has he constructed some new evil temple? Uh, what rooms has he going to have added somewhere within the complex? Well, those are just some ideas off the top of my head. I would then spend some time fleshing areas out if I thought the characters would spend a lot of time in this place. I would create a rough outline uh, of the map and the area, uh, kind of some quick details of what is where, uh, both the tower and dungeon underneath. I might even do some sketches of places I find interesting. But, you know, the idea is that designing both a short and quick adventure map is not too complicated. You know, we just did this in just a few minutes, and we could be rolling in, we could be doing just random rooms at this point, but we would know why they were there and what was going on. So if you just do a bit of brainstorming, you're going to come up with plenty of fun ideas. Well, thanks for taking a look. What did I miss, and what would you add? Catch you next time. Bye. Hey, thanks for watching the video. Please give a like, share, subscribe, and hit that bell icon. Catch you next time. Bye.